Found an interesting problem on Andy's MX-6 KLDE. He had a parasitic drain where when leaving the car sitting out overnight, it would drain itself, well, maybe two days, right? Something like that, two days. The battery would drain, couldn't figure out why. So we go in, we do the standard parasitic drain test, which is to hook the, uh, the probes up in series, like that, okay? And then you look on for, uh, you look on your multimeter for an amp draw. And we were getting almost two amps with all the fuses and everything connected. We were getting higher than two amps, 2.2 total, max 2.2. Let's connect this up and we'll start pulling fuses. So we pulled all the fuses, every single fuse out of the uh, joint box in the interior of the cabin. Did not change, still getting a, an, a high amp draw. I think it dropped down to 1.8 something, but it was still way, way too high. You should get 50 milliamps. So then next we went out the fuse box. We pulled every single fuse and every single relay, including the 100 amp main, and it did not go away. Remove the 100 amp main. In order to remove the 100 amp main, it is different than all the other fuses. You have to remove the fuse box, lay it over, get at these two connections, because the 100 amp main is screwed down. Once you get that out, then we jumpered across these two terminals to see our amp draw. Our amp draw was on the main. It was going through the main 100 amp fuse, two amps, through the 100 amp fuse. Okay, so it's not anything to do with the fuse box. It's not anything to do with the internal fuse. So it has to be in the engine bay, engine bay somewhere. Quite a long time to figure out where on that main line it was going. I narrowed it down to the alternator. The wiring diagrams only show that that main, that 100 amp main goes to the charging system. And what's in the charging system? The alternator. And the only thing that goes from the alternator, there's two wires. One goes straight up to the instrument cluster. And since we pulled the meter fuse inside, that instrument cluster bulb is not going to do the, the two amp draw. All right, so those wires, uh, one of those wires, I think it's the white and green goes up to the instrument cluster and then the other one goes to the voltage regulator. And the voltage regulator is also powered by the EGI main relay. And since all these fuses were already pulled out, we know it's not due to the voltage regulator. So we're still getting a two amp draw on the alternator. So we pulled the post off of the alternator and sure enough, that two amp draw went bye bye. 40 milli. And then it dropped down to 40 milliamps, which is perfectly within spec. So we know that he's got a problem with his alternator. Somehow, some way, the alternator, more than likely, my guess, a bad diode rectifier that is allowing the battery voltage to drain back into the alternator when the car is off. That's a, a diode is a one-way check valve that only allows voltage to go from the alternator to the battery to recharge it but it's going back that way when the car is off and it should not happen. So we're looking at possibly blown diode rectifier inside the alternator. Also, also note that the alternator is covered with oil because I have a oil leak uh, in this vicinity. Like, I have an oil leak right here. Like, everything encompasses on here. Like, everything. There's an oil leak everywhere. <laughs> I cleaned uh, down there with some break um degreaser yeah with some no no actually i use throttle body? i use that that was way better well the throttle body to get off the grease initially <laughs> but you, you don't want to use that prolonged because it can hurt rubber and seals and stuff like that so i cleaned it up really good yeah it looks great but uh yeah i do have an oil leak as you can see right there valve cover gasket yeah everything gasket leak <laughs> the point is i have an oil leak and the whole alternator is covered with oil externally and i'm sure internally it goes right in there so I'm sure the fact that there's oil inside the alternator or dripping into the alternator most likely has a major uh, impact on something that's inside the alternator that's actually broken or malfunctioning that's actually drawing that 2 amp maybe contributing to overheating of the alternator which burned out the diode rectifier or something like that high who, resistance who knows, wiring. But yeah. I, got, I got oil leaks and I'm sure that doesn't help so now we know is that the alternator that's drawing the uh, two amps when the car is turned off. That's the problem, the alternator. Diagnosis, awesome. And make sure between tests that you uh, take off those battery terminals. You don't want to be a fried crispy critter. No fried Andy's allowed. Nope, it is on that. Okay, so the charge light is barely illuminated. See it? Barely even on. Okay, currently our voltage is 12.56. So the charge light is not on, correct? Not on. Correct. Turn now, as soon as you put a load on, turn the, turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. I mean, 
We're de dropping down 12.3. If you're at 12.3, the charge light should start to come on. Now the AC, 12.1. Charge light came on momentarily. 11.9, now it's on. So it's below about 12.1, 12. Let's just say around 12 volts. His system voltage, that's at idle. His system voltage should be around 13 to 14 volts, preferably 14.3 to 14.7 while the car is running. It's at 11.85 with all loads on. His alternator is shot. Time for a new alternator. And with, uh, with gas, 11.8, 9, 12, 12.1, 12.2. Charge light turns off. All right, now release the gas and it should slowly decline with all the loads back on, 12.2, and now the light comes back on. That is how to diagnose a bad alternator. When it's off. Yeah. So this is more of a continuation. This is going to be the end of the video from the earlier video of the alternator parasitic draw alternator test, which is, a, I would say, a pretty rare occurrence to see an alternator be the cause of a parasitic drain.